I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live again. And he who believes in me shall never die. Man is born of a woman in but a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. We brought nothing into this world and it's certain we can carry nothing out. <clears throat> the Lord hath given, the Lord taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle. He shall set me up on a rock and I shall my head be lifted up above mine enemy. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger, for I has been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. Brother Stout, you can. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over into the will of mine enemies. I had fainted unless I had, seen, had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. God bless you. At the request of the family, uh, there'll be no post viewing. And so you have that opportunity now if you've not paid your respects and would like to do so or view, you may do so at this time. But at the request of the family, there'll be no post viewing once the celebration of life has concluded. So you may come at this time if you've not had the opportunity to, to view. Thank God for all the family, the friends that are here on today. God bless you. Anyone, you're welcome to. And thereafter, at the request of the family, there'll be no post viewing. God bless you. We're praying for this family, standing with this family, standing with this wife, this family. Bless this youngest son.
bless you. I want you praying for this family and praying with this family. Pray God, stick around and pray with them, if you will. Amen. At this time. The grandchildren, the family. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, let's put our hand together for the life of Brother Robert Lovelace. Amen. God bless you. At this time, in the hands of Elder Donald, Elder Hawkins. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, let's say amen. Come on, let's say amen. Amen. We're here to celebrate the life of Robert, a friend of mine. Been knowing Robert for a long time. Amen. And, you know, Robert was one that he didn't mind doing whatever you asked him to do. They said, well, how would you know that? Robert used to work for me. He used to work for me. I hired Robert. We uh, truck drivers, and I was operations manager at that time. And uh, knew Robert, gave Robert a job, and he did a good job. One thing about him, I didn't have no trouble out of Robert. I had some trouble out of some others. But I didn't have no problem with Robert. Robert did what he was asked to do, and he did it gracefully. But we're here to celebrate his life today. His life. Yeah, some of you all may want to cry. There's nothing wrong with crying. There's nothing wrong with shedding some tears. It's hard to lose a loved one. But there's nothing wrong with getting it out now. Let it go. But remember, nobody took his life. It was God that come by and say, Robert, it's time for you to come this way. And we must remember the life that we live today is going to shine tomorrow. Is how you live it today. But we're here to celebrate Robert's life. A man that I know for a fact that gave his life to God. And that's all matters. That's all that matters. That he acknowledged God as his Savior. So as we are here today to celebrate life, a man that gave his life to God. We're not celebrating a funeral, but we're celebrating his life, the life that God gave him. So as we go on into this program, our Old Testament scripture today will be done by the elder William Watson, the New Testament by Elder Collins B. Hunt, prayer by Pastor Christopher Smith, and a celebration of song by Sister Elizabeth Holmes. Let's say amen as they come. Amen.
Good morning, church. I'll be reading I'll be reading Psalms 138 through the sixth, first through the sixth chapter, verse. And it reads, I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the God, I will sing praise to you. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified the word above all your name. Mm -hmm. And in the days when I cry out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Yes, they shall sing the ways of the Lord. For the great is the glory of the Lord through the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. I'm going to seven. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hands against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the doing of his word. We come to celebrate. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I think about the scripture that we don't mourn like those who have no hope. Because another scripture tells me that I did not, they did not kill me. I laid down my life. But I had the power to pick it up again. Now, if he can pick his own life up, when I'm a believer, I know without a doubt that he's got me. He's got Robert this morning. Right. He'll pick him up. Amen? Amen? So I'm going to read a scripture of hope, a promise that he made to us. Amen? I'm coming from John 14, verses 1 through 6. Right. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, they may be also. And whither I go, you know, and you know the way. Oh, Thomas, oh, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. And how can we know it the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody, no man comes us unto the Lord, but from by me. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. say this real quick uh, every time I would go visit my daddy uh, the latter years of course when he was dealing with a whole bunch of illnesses before I would leave he would tell me Chris lay one on me and I knew he was talking about prayer and so I want to lay one on the family today including myself and those that know how to pray let's pray Father, in the name of Jesus, that is the name above every name. That is the name that we draw strength from. That's the name that we draw help from. That is the name that is a deliverer. That is a name that is a savior. That is a name that is a healer. That is a name that is a refuge. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous can run and find safety. I pray today that we find safety in your name. Yes, we find safety, yes, and healing and peace in your name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we release the peace of God that 
surpasses all understanding over my family now in the name of Jesus. Let that uncanny peace be upon them now. Let the peace that blows their mind cover them now. Give them joy in the time of sorrow. For the joy of the Lord is their strength. So Father, I release joy now in the name of Jesus. For we don't mourn as those who have no hope. Because we have hope in Christ Jesus. For he is the hope of glory. So we thank you for the, yes, we thank you for the hope of glory. In our time of sorrow. In our time of mourning. In our time of tears. In our time of hurting. We thank you that we have, yes, we have a Savior. We have a Savior that we can call upon. That that thing will bubble up inside of us, Lord. Cover my family now in the name of Jesus. We come against confusion now in Jesus' name. We come against regret now in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, that peace, yes, Lord, and unity shall be their portions. I thank you, Lord, that we won't be weary in this season, Lord, but we are more than healthy, God. But we thank you, God, for that joy cometh in the morning. Yes, God, for I reckon that this suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that which shall be revealed in us. We thank you that there's glory coming. I said I'm thankful that there's glory coming. There's glory coming. I don't, yes, I don't have to worry because I know my father, yes, gave his life to Jesus and absent from the body is present with the Lord. Absent from the I'm sorry, I gotta feel that wind. My soul, my soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. I stand in the gap for my family. My soul loves Jesus. I stand in the gap for my brothers. I stand in the gap for my sisters. I stand in the gap for my mother. I stand in the gap for my grandmother. I stand in the gap for my family. In the name of Jesus, what can wipe what can wipe away our tears? Nothing but Jesus. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm celebrating because my father knew Jesus. He knew Jesus. And because he gave his life to Jesus, I'll see him again. Though I don't see him here, one day I'm going to see him. One day I'm going to walk with him because he loved Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we'll see him again when Jesus break the cloud. He said the dead in Christ is going to rise first. We that remain is going to meet them in the air. That is what it means to live holy. Give your life to Christ. Because there is an afterlife. There is an afterlife. That afterlife is with Jesus. Where do you want to go when you leave this side? Well, I'm going to tell you that I want to go with Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Amen. Pastor Smith, appreciate that prayer. It had to be the God in you to let that loose. Amen. We're here for a celebration. As I said, to celebrate Robert's life. Because he had given his life to Christ. Not that he had given it to him down through the years, but he rededicated. He made sure that he was on the right track. We need to do the same thing. We have to be sure that our anchor holds because there's a storm coming. And the question is, will your anchor hold? Amen. As we move forward, we have the solid reading 
of the obituary. We're going to ask the organist to give us a soft melody while we read the obituary. Amen. Forgive me, I overlooked the celebration of song. Amen. Let's say amen for Sister Elizabeth Holmes. As she come and after her, we will have the resolution by missionary Barbara Tyler. Let's say amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the time to celebrate Brother Robert's life. Guess what? He's with the Lord. And we're waiting to get there. What a great getting up day it is going to be when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing it shall be. When you hear of my home going, don't you worry about me. When you hear of my home going, don't you worry about me.
We give honor to God, who is the head of our life. It's better to our pastor, the Bishop Shelton C. Rose, to all the elders and ministers on the roster, to the saints of God, and to you, my beloved Marie family. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we come to rejoice and to be glad in it. If you will permit me, I have three resolutions, one from Praise Cathedral, one from The Rock, and one from Christian Love Center. Praise Cathedral, Church of God in Christ, 5895, Benz, Engelman Road, San Antonio, Texas, the Bishop Shelton C. Rose Pastor. Resolution for Brother Robert Perry Lavala II, a.k.a. Buck. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Psalms 23, verses 1 through 4. Whereas in the providence of God, he has brought to a close the life of Brother Robert Perry Lavala II. The pastor, Bishop Shelton C. Rose, officers and members of the Praise Cathedral Church family feel that it is befitting to express their sympathy to our beloved family during the passing of Brother Buck. We commend you to him who knoweth best and will always do right. You have our sincere prayers. Whereas Brother Robert in his earlier years accepted Christ as his personal Lord and Savior at the St. Paul Baptist Church under the leadership of the late Pastor Sherman Bedford. Buck, as he was fondly called by all who loved him and knew him, rededicated his life under the leadership of the late Bishop Samuel Edward Igo Hart, and again under Bishop Shelton C. Rose. Paul says in Philippians 2 and 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. He was an active member of the usher board there at the Church's Memorial Church of God in Christ until his health began to fail. Brother Lavla loved the Lord, his wife, family, children, friends, pastor, and church family. He loved to have fun, brother playing dominoes, talking trash, queuing on the pit, or working under the hood of an automobile or a truck. He lived life to his fullness. Be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake and remind the family to be encouraged by remembering this poem. When I must leave you for a little while, please do not grieve and share wild tears and hug your sorrows to your, through the years, but start out bravely with a gallant smile. And for my sake and in my name, live on and do all things the same. Feed not your loneliness on empty days, but fill each walking hour, each waking hour in useful ways. And I, in return, will comfort you and hold you nearby. And never, never be afraid to die, for I am waiting for you just in the sky. The author of this poem is unknown. Family, in the coming days, remember your experiences with your loved one. Be thankful for a God of grace and mercy who is with us in life and in death throughout eternity. So let this be your comfort that your loved one, Brother Robert Perry Lavala 
the second has gone on to be with the Lord, where sickness, pain, and sorrow can never touch him again. A beloved soldier has finished his course. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution is given to the family and a copy be kept in our church archives. Omni submitted on the 15th day of July, 2024. Bishop Shelton C. Rose, pastor, missionary Barbara Ann Rawls Tyler, church historian. The Rock, resolution for Brother Robert Perry Lavalis II. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the faith. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all those who long for his appearance, 2 Timothy 4, 7, and 8. Dear family, we, the Rock San Antonio, would like to offer our heartfelt sympathy as you gather today in honor of the life of Mr. Robert Perry Lavalis II. We pray that the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. May this foundation of perseverance, faith, and dedication continue to inspire those who knew him and the generation to come. In times such as this, Encourage yourself in the Lord and rely upon the word of God for strength, comfort, and peace. Be assured that we hold up in prayer and stand ready to assist you in any way that we can. May this passage bring you comfort. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house has, my father's house has many mansions. If it were not so, what I have told you, and that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that ye also may be where I am. John 14, verses one through three. Therefore, on behalf of the Rock San Antonio family, we offer this resolution as an expression of our condolence to the family and friends of Mr. Lavalas. May God be your refuge and strength, a very present help in the hour of bereavement. Be it resolved, a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy will remain in the church archives. Omni submitted on July 15, 2024 by the Rock of San Antonio, San Antonio, Texas, 78218, Apostle Calvin Duhart Sr., lead pastor. The last one. Resolution from, of respect to evangelist Connie, Gary, and family in loving memory of Robert Perry Labalis. From Pastor Tamisha Spears, whereas God has brought to a close the life of Robert Perry Labalis, Pastor Tamisha Spears, along with the members of the Christian Love Center with headquarters in San Diego, California, feel that it is befitting to express our sympathy to the family during this time of bereavement. We recommend you to him who knoweth best and will always do right. You have our sincere prayers. Although Robert's time on this earth has ended, his presence and his spirit certainly left a sweet, sustaining memory in the hearts of many. Be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake and remind the family to be encouraged by remembering this scripture. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, write, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the spirit, that they may rest from their labor and their works do follow them. Revelations 14 and 13. To the family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great. We want you to know that we share in your sorrow. But more importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. Humbly submitted on the 13th day of July, 2024, Christian Love Center, San Diego, California, Pastor Tamisha Spears, Pastor, thank you so much. A 
Amen. Let's say amen for the resolutions. Amen. Before we go any further, we have some lost keys. We want to make sure you get home. Amen. Now we're here to the reflections of the family and friends. We want to ask all of those that want to have words, would you line up over on this wall where the usher is standing? And we're asking you to keep it at two minutes. For all of those that want to have comments concerning the, re at the request of the family, two minutes. Please just line up over here so that we can proceed on. Give an honor to God, to the ministers on the program, Christians and friends. My name is Larry Darnell Lavalais. I'm Buck's little brother. My entire life, I watched Buck overcome different obstacles, doing different things that people said he couldn't do. Couldn't do. Buck was my hero. Buck taught me so much. Buck gave me my first job. Paid 10 cents a day. I was a retrieval dog. I had to go get everything that Buck shot, rabbits, squirrels, birds. I had to go get it. The first time I went with him, I didn't have a bag to put stuff in. So the next time we went, he stole one of Mama's pillowcases <laughs> so that I could put the rabbits, the squirrels, and everything in. But like I say, he paid me 10 cents a day. Buck taught me how to fix bicycles, taught me how to fish, taught me how to swim. I learned how to swim the hard way. Mama told them if they went to the swimming pool, they had to take me. So we had to walk through the weeds to go to Monterey Park to the swimming pool. So we had to pass by this creek. So about every 20 feet, Buck would grab me, throw me in the water. <laughs> he pulled me out the water. He said, boy, you don't watch Tarzan with me enough. You ought to know how to swim. I walk a little further. He grabbed me. He threw me in the water again. Third time. I came up swimming like Tarzan. I knew how to swim. <laughs> Got to the swimming pool. I was swimming at the deep end of the pool, everything, coming off the diving board. But like I say, Buck showed me so much. He tried to teach me how to be a mechanic, but I couldn't stand the grease and the oil. So he would tell me, well, what are you going to do when you get a car and your car mess up? I'm going to bring it to you. <laughs> it's what you do. You fix cars. But I'm going to miss my big brother because like I say, he was my hero, and he can't be replaced. But that's. Good morning to everyone. My name is Angela Lewis Owens. I am the niece of Claudette Lavallees and Uncle Perry. I met the boys um, when they would come over to Uncle Perry's and Uncle Claudette's house on Bundy Street. And um, I remember Uncle Buck, I just, just looking at him, I thought he was a very mean person growing up. But come to find out he was a bear, a lovable bear. And I'm up here speaking on behalf of the Lewis and um, my Aunt Claudette Lavallee's and Uncle Perry's family, um, to Camilla, to Larry, to Uncle Donnie. It's good seeing you, haven't seen you in years. Um, your, um, the family will be in our prayers during this time of bereavement. And the scripture I would like to leave is, peace I leave with you my peace I will give unto you, not as the world give it, give I unto thee. Let not, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. 
Um, I love you guys. If you ever need me, um, you know, modern technology, Facebook or Messenger, either one of them. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Adrienne Davison, and I am here on behalf of the Davison family. That would be John Christopher Davison Sr. and our children. I just want to say that um, I consider, well, not consider, but I know that Carmela is my big sister. She's my friend, and she is a confidant. And I appreciate the life of Mr. Robert. I've been able to be close with them at home, not out in public, but at home. And when I would come into the house, I'd say, Uncle Buck, he said, hey, how you doing? And because of our relationship, I've gotten to know Mother Ethel and gotten to know Mother Connie and gotten to know my brother, uh, Mr. Larry, and I saw Chris growing up and Nisha growing up when they were children. And I just want to encourage the family today. I thank God that about a month, a month and a half ago, I went into Northeast Baptist Hospital. And I said, hey, Uncle Buck, he said, hey, and then start asking me several questions. But I, I appreciate those last minutes that I was able to spend with him because he was somebody that I really appreciated. Carmela and Uncle Buck have supported me for a number of years, and I really appreciate them. And I just want to say to the family that this is what I stand on. And I don't know about anybody else in this time. And I've had to repeat it personally. And I want to tell you guys that I stand on the words of Jesus. The writer Matthew in the fifth chapter gave his recordings of when Jesus went up into a mountain and he had his friends with him. And when he got settled, you know, he saw a multitude of people and when he got settled, he sat and he taught them saying, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And with this situation, this is what I stand on because I've experienced death more than I care to. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And I love it so much because in that particular passage of scripture, there's nobody talking but Jesus. And I thank God that I can stand on his word. And I love you all. God bless you. Giving thanks to God and to the pastors and ministers on the roster, to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I am here to represent the friendship of my friend, Camilla and her family. Camilla and I go a long way. We talk about everything that we can't tell each other's families. Or, let me put it this way, we talk about things that she and I can understand from a woman's perspective. Camilla, I just want you to know that God knows that you did your best and you took care of your husband, and that's what's all it, that is expected of you. And to, his, to Robert, who we call Buck, and his family, just know that he's in a better place. And guess what? He would never come back here if you asked him to. So 
the joy of it all is that he went where he was supposed to go. He's with the Lord. And just know that what's left of us is we got to get our life right so that we can see him again. So on behalf of the Boeing's family, Kamala, you know we love you. You don't ever have to call me. I'm always a phone call away, but guess what? We talk all the time, so I'm there for you whenever you need me. I love you, sis. And you're more like a sister than a best friend. We've been friends forever. And I hope that on this day, you can look back and say what a blessing it was to be the wife of Robert. Thank you, and may God bless you. hoping this is going to be rough, but we're going to make it. Um, I want to say that he's a, he was a good daddy, a good father. Um, I appreciate him accepting me as his own. Uh, he came into my life when I was like six years old, and um, he raised me to be a man. He, he, I know that voice. Thanks, Pop Duhart. <laughs> he raised me to be a man. Everything that I know about cars, uh, I mean, fishing, not much. Not much. <laughs> See, Bucky, I wasn't going to go there with you. <laughs> uh, I didn't know how to work on cars because Bucky took all the tools. Um, but he accepted me as his own, didn't see me any otherwise. And, I love him for that. Uh, that's why this one really hurts, because this is the only father I knew. Um, and I want to say thank you to my brothers, because they accepted me as a brother. Um, yeah, you, uh, it warms my heart when I hear Bucky say, he the baby. Um, I noticed that I'm not the baby no more, Bucky. I think we found that out. I'm not the baby no more. Maybe other brothers, but you know. But um, thank you to them. And I'm sharing this because I want them to know that I appreciate them. And also, I appreciate my mother. I know this is about my daddy, but I appreciate my mother because she took care of my daddy. Can we clap our hands for my mother, please? Doctor visits, being there with him, giving him medicine, making sure that he was taken care of. I appreciate her for that. We all had our hand in it, but my mama stuck around for that, and I appreciate her for that. Um, but last thing, I know I have two minutes. <laughs> um, my daddy um, would do this thing when I was younger. He would always go to the store, and uh, I would ask him, can I get some candy? And uh, he would tell me, okay, you want some candy? Anything else you want? You want some chips, too? I'm like, yeah, daddy, I want some chips. He said, you want a soda, too? i like, yeah, give me a soda. Give me a, you know, Mr. Good Boy. I want, I want it all. He's like, okay, stay right here. Don't leave. He would go to the store. He would come back, and he didn't have no candy, <laughs> no chips, no soda, no Mr. Good Boy, nothing. But I remember, uh, we, he was in the hospital at Northeast Baptist. And, uh, and my brothers know, they, he liked to eat snacks. Am I right, Derek? M&Ms, he was gonna go hard on some M&Ms. But um, he liked snacks, so he would always tell me to go to the vending machine. So I'm walking out of the door, and I said, you want some candy? He said, yeah. I looked at him and said, you want some chips, too? <laughs> He's like, yeah. I said, you want some soda, too? And he just busted out. <laughs> I went down there and got him some chips. I got him a soda and I came back. He said, I thought you had left. I said, Daddy, when have I ever gone out and not brought you back what you wanted? Because he's deserved it. He took care of me, he took care of my mama. He did everything in his power to be there for us. And I just appreciate him and I honor him today. And I know he's proud of all of us. I know he is. And I just want to say I love him and um, I'm really gonna miss you, I really am. But thank you all for being here, I appreciate you.
gives an honor to God and two bishop Rhodes and all the ministers on the rostrum. I am Buck's Uncle Buck's uncle. <laughs> Growing up with Buck, Larry, all my nephews, my sisters' sons, and my brother's sons. It's a blessing to have had him in my life as not as a nephew, but as a brother. But being raised so close with them, they were like brothers to me. I wasn't always uncle. I just wonder why you wait till I got old to call me uncle. <laughs> I didn't mind, it didn't mean that much to me because we grew up like brothers and Buck and I and all my nephews, we've never had a crossword. We've never argued about anything. And Buck went by a lot of different names. He was known by a lot of different names. I called him Mr. Fix-It. Those of you that knew him know there was nothing Buck couldn't fix. If it was you took it to him broke, when you left, it would be fixed. But he was a kind person. He didn't talk a lot, neither do I. So two minutes was really cheating Buck, not me. And to the family be encouraged because God is not done. He's coming back again for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. So we need to get our houses in order. So to everyone, be blessed. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. In obedience to God and to the angel of this house, Bishop Shelton Rhodes, and to the clergy and your prospective paces, to the family and to all you saints of God, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Listen, this is a celebration of life. Amen. My brother knew the Lord. Amen. 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 Tribute to Robert P. Lavelis II, a.k.a. Buck. My brother Buck was in a class all by himself. He had a heart of gold and a personality with a bubbly sense of humor. He would start telling you a joke or a funny story and he would get so tickled that he couldn't even get the punchline out, amen? <laughs> he was one of the best mechanics of his time, and he would help anybody, amen? Even uh, charging sometimes little of nothing, amen? Towards the end of his life, as uh, I watched his health begin to change, and we saw him struggling to uh, hold on to this life, the nurse in me recognized that he was preparing to transition. But the God in me, amen, but the God in me prayed for a miracle. As I watched my brother struggling to hold on to this world, it just broke my heart. When I would come home to see about him, I would hear him sometimes on his knees praying the way mama taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us, hallelujah, our debts as we forgive our debtors. Amen? Amen. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen? I would hear him calling out to his father in heaven sometime. Sometime I'd walk by when I stayed over there and I'd see him on his knees by the side of the bed. And then other times I would hear him calling out to Carmela. Carmela, honey, come see about me. And Carmela would get up and go. Buck loved Carmela. He loved his mom. He loved his kids. He loved family. 
and he loved life. He got his healings and he got his miracle, just not on this side. Amen. Amen. He got a new body. Because the word of God says, when this earth, hallelujah, or when this, hallelujah, but we know that if this earthly house or tabernacle be dissolved, we have another building, hallelujah, eternal in the heavens, not made by hand. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He don't need no more oxygen, okay? Because he's with the giver of life. He's with the one that breathed into Adam the breath of life. And the word said Adam became a living soul. Amen. Amen. He don't have to worry about swelling in his legs. Got some new legs now. And my body said, my Bible said he's leaping for joy. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He don't have to fear lying down in the bed because he can't breathe. Because the Lord, it was his life and his salvation. It say, whom shall we fear? Amen. He's laying in the bosom of the master now. He ain't got nothing to fear. But most of all, my brother got his joy back. For my Bible say that joy, unspeakable joy. Amen. Amen. He's bubbling again. Amen. To my family, to those of you who don't know Christ, I encourage you before you leave here today, get to know him as your Savior. Amen? So you can be with your uncle, with your daddy, with your uh, brother, whoever, whatever he is to you. Now unto him that's able to do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine, according to the power that worketh in us, be glory in the church, in Christ Jesus, world throughout all ages, forever. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Let's say amen for her. Come on, come on. Amen. God is good. Come on, God is good. Amen. We're going to have a, a song by Sister Mosley. Okay, we're going to deviate. We're going to have the pulpit, our clergy, to come and give remarks, starting with Ella Watson. I met uh, Buck, Uncle Buck, as y'all call him, through Carmella, Sister Carmella, and um, each time that I uh, see him, he just had a wonderful spirit about him. He was easy to just talk to, probably because I like to talk junk too, but it's every time I seen him or when I seen Sister Carmela, I was asked how was he doing, or when he comes to church, how was he doing? And um, I want y'all to know that I am praying for y'all in y'all time of bereavement and uh, I'm just happy that he's not in pain and suffering no more. And I am praying for the family for peace, comfort, and strength. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. My name is Elder Michael Hilliard, and uh, I didn't really get the true satisfaction of knowing your husband, but the things I've heard said, especially about working on automobiles, uh, really touched me. Uh, I was in the military and uh, at Fort Sam, they used to have a place that any troop could go and work on his car. And uh, I had what you want to call a hoopty that every weekend I was fixing something that was broke. And I said, Lord, I just wish I knew. But eventually I learned how to change the uh, power uh, in the, the automatic window. And I really thought I had done something great. And then um, the, heat, the heat water pump went out. And oh, I spent some time burning my 
fingers scraping my knuckles, and I really thought I did something. So, Sister Carmela, uh, you know I love you and your family, and I have so much respect that I just had to be here just to share with you and know that uh, we impact each other in so many different ways. And we got to remember that it's all to God's glory. So I honor you today and thank God for his life and your life. Greetings, I'm Elder Keeman Ford here at Praise Cathedral. And um, I was just sitting there thinking about so many different things, um, losing people <clears throat> that you're close to and you don't realize sometimes how it is until it happens. You know, there's two people that we've lost recently. One was Patrick Davison, and the other one is Buck. And it seems like, I think that they maybe didn't think the things that they did were so significant and how they affected so many people. But you don't realize sometimes the small things, how they affect so many people. I think that they never would have thought that they would be um, remembered as big as they were remembered. And it only makes me want to do um, more as God gives us the ability. I too have a memory of Buck working on my vehicle and I remember because I ran my, my brakes down. You know, young, you ain't stopping for nothing but gas. <laughs> so I ran my brakes down so much that I messed up like calipers, everything. And Buck was like, we gonna get it, we gonna get it. And he kept on, he told me, how we gonna get a cheetah pipe? I didn't know what a cheetah pipe was because my lug nuts were so tight and I mean, just, I was, I probably was praying that, that, that we got it fixed. I didn't want to have to deal with it. But I just remember, that's when y'all stayed off of 78. And just, just you know, just, I mean, like you said, he probably didn't even charge me nothing. Just, 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 just a given spirit, you know, just a given spirit, a given person. And um, I mean, the small things that we do, the, 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 the time, the effort, the energies, I think sometimes we don't recognize how far they go. To the Smith and the Lovelace family, we're here for you, Chris, Nisha. I mean, to the siblings, y'all know we're here for you. We came out today. I made sure we were here today just, just to let you know that we stand with you and we're continuing to pray for you. God bless you. I'm Pastor Collis Hunt from Integrity Christian Fellowship in San Diego, California. I was Buck's brother-in-law. And, and I had some issues with Buck because when uh, I was courting his sister, Ruby Faye, I'm trying to be cool and I'm in the house and these little bad butt kids pushed my truck into the weeds. Yeah, 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 you remember Larry. Yeah, you was, you was part of that crew. And I got scared because I grabbed Sammy and I put him in a headlock and I didn't know what I was doing. Next thing I know, he passed out and I got scared. I was ready to run, but, but thank God we had a lot of things in common because I'm a, I'm a car guy myself. And so when Buck and I got together, we can talk about cars, amen? But I just want to share it with the family and tell them that we don't have a great high priest that don't understand what we're going through. When I think about Jesus, I think about scripture, and it tells me that the shortest scripture in the Bible says he wept. It's all right to mourn, but we don't mourn like those who have no hope because we serve the true and living God. He knows, he knows, he knows. It says that, that he, well, why would the, the, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end, why would he weep? Because he had lost a friend. 
and yet still had to go to the cross and thinking about the church. So therefore he wept. I'm telling you this morning, it's all right for us to mourn. But we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't mourn like those who have no hope. Because our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. We come to celebrate. Because in Revelation it tells me that he will wipe the tears from your eyes. Tell me there ain't going to be no more pain, no more disappointment. We ain't going to have this old broke down body, amen. It tells us it's going to give us an uncorrupted body. Come on, y'all, come on. Celebrate him, give this to the Lord a hand praise, amen. Hey Amen. There's nothing wrong with celebrating the Lord. He is the author. He is the finisher. He's always made in a way for us to escape. For us to come out victoriously. He is our father. As the evangelist said that he book was praying, which art in heaven. He is. Amen. Now we're going to have our song by Sister Shay Mables. And well, we have two of them here. This color, uh, Sister Mosley. And then after Sister Mosley, we're going to have the video tribute. And after the, the tribute, Sister Shea Mables, and after she has sung, all right, did you have someone to speak? We're just going to deviate just briefly. Okay, come on. Just the request of the family. We're accommodating for the request of the family. I'm here on behalf of my family, the Harper family. Aunt Ethel is my auntie. Um, her and my father grew up as like brothers and sisters, and. I'm in here in San Diego, in San Antonio, and I would just like to say from our family, our greatest condolences on Ethel. Your home has always been our home, and going to your house and seeing all the beautiful pictures of our family, and especially Buck and Rick and Larry and Ruby and Connie, they have always welcomed us when we've been in the States, and I just want you to know we all all of my brothers and sisters, um, I'm here representing them just to let you know how much we truly love you and your family um, and my family. Um, I just want to say thank you so very much because your home is our forever home and I appreciate you so very much. Thank you. Amen. Amen at the request of the family. Amen. And now we're going to have a song by Sister Mosley. And after Sister Mosley, we would have the video tribute. You got a mark, remark? Mosley. Okay. And after the video tribute, we're going to well, I'll come back and do it that, the last introduction on that. Go ahead. How y'all doing today? All right, I'll just sing a little song. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadow Come and why should 
my heart feel lonely and long for heaven is my home when Jesus is my portion was a giant When I was just a kid I was always trying To do everything he did I can still remember Every lesson he taught me Growing up Learning how to be Like my old man was a lion We were a father's pride But I was defiant When he made me walk the line He knew how to lift me up And when to let me fall Looking back He always had a plan My old man my old man, feel the callous on his hands and dusty overalls. My old man, now I finally understand. I have a lot to learn from my old man. He's proud of who I am I'm 
trying to fill the boots of my old man. Amen. Now we're here for a celebratory song by Shea Mables. After she has completed her song, we want to ask everyone to stand except for the family to receive the priests of this house, none other than the Bishop Shelton Craig Rose. We ask you to rest to your feet after she's finished her song. All but the family. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Y'all said it was a celebration of life. Hallelujah. Now, I did not know uh, Brother Buck. However, I have had many encounters with um, his son, Pastor Chris. And knowing that he had a lot to do with the man that Pastor Chris is today, I know he was a good man. Amen. Um, I quoted the scripture earlier that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And really, can you just imagine what it is that Brother Buck is seeing right now, y'all? I mean, just imagine what his eyes are beholding, what he's getting to experience right now. Um, and really, I just want to encourage you all, like they have mentioned earlier, that when we focus on living our life right here, we'll get to see him again on the other side. But just take a moment and just imagine a little bit what it is that he's seeing right now and how we desire to be surrounded by the presence and the glory of God, which is exactly where he is. So we thank God for that. I can only imagine. I can only imagine, I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine. I can only imagine to be surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Will I Jesus, or in all of you be still, will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak it all, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine. I can only imagine when that day comes and to find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all that I will do is forever 
forever worship you I can only imagine oh, I can only imagine to be surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will I dance for you Jesus or in all To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak it all, to be surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel, will I dance for you Jesus, all in all with you be still, will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. Oh, can you only imagine to be surrounded in his glory? Can you only To be surrounded in his presence, can you only imagine? I can only imagine. Because when I see Jesus, amen. When I see the man that died for me, All of my trials, every sickness, every pain, it will all be over. When I see Jesus, Come on, put those hands together all over the house, all over the house. Family, you may be seated, family, but the rest, God bless, thank you. All over the house. Let's give Jesus a hand all over the house. Thanking God for the memories. Let's thank God for the memories. The memories. And to him be the glory. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you once again. We thank you, Lord, that we can only imagine. We see it in your word, Lord, but we can only imagine. Holly, we thank you for who you are right now. Thank you for the Holy Ghost on the inside, opening our understanding. God, giving us a foretaste of glory divine. We thank you, God, even now for this life. Hallelujah. Absent from the body, present with you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, strengthen this family, strengthen this wife, strengthen the mother, God. Strengthen God throughout. Strengthen and heal. Lord, give strength, give peace as only you can. And we give you praise and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Give him praise all over the house, all of that. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. What a blessing. Thank you for that rendition. Let's give them some love. They did a wonderful job. Thank you so very much. Amen. We certainly give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on this morning. Amen. Thanking God for, amen, the clergy that is present. Amen. To, amen, my wife that is here on today, our church mother, Mother Cynthia Chandler. Pray God to this family. Amen. To the Lavalese family and uh, to each and every one of you, the children. We thank God for you on today. I want to appreciate, amen, I want to appreciate Pastor Hunt, amen. He did a good job, didn't he? Elder Hunt, come on, let's thank God for him on today. <laughs> Pastor Smith, thank God for each and every one of these that have been on the line. Elder Watson, appreciate each and every one of these. I was talking to Elder Hunt just a little bit ago. I said, well, 
I said, when I welcomed you to Praise Cathedral, I said, you told me in no uncertain terms you already dug in. Y'all ain't said that. So he explained just how dug in he'd been. Dug in enough for his pickup truck to be pushed in the weeds. Y'all ain't said nothing. And you, you look kind of guilty there for a little bit now. Well, <laughs> thank God when we can come together, amen, like a reunion, like a reunion. Amen. It's a blessing. It's been an honor to serve Sister Carmilla and to serve, pray God, uh, to serve Brother Lavalas. Amen. You say Buck. I say Brother Lavalas. Amen. Lavalas. It's been a blessing to serve them. Pray God when I found out that uh, his help was like it was. Amen. Uh, I, I serve this whole church. I don't just serve a part. I don't serve who, you, you understand. I don't get into all that. I just serve the people of God. God is about people. God's business is people business. And you get out of people business, you got out of God's business, and you out of business, pray God. I'm talking about when he said, uh, be about, when Jesus said, be about my father's business is what he said, pray God. Occupy until he come. And it's, it's, it's a labor of love uh, because his wife, the way she carries herself, let's thank God for her right on this front row right here. And she stayed with him up until the very end, up until the very end. Um, that uh, time she was having her own health, um, uh, health challenges. Uh, she, would, uh, she was getting him admitted to the hospital, and he didn't know it. She was on her way to the hospital being admitted herself. And I really didn't want to tell him one day, you know, he, he knew that she would be right there to him. And he just asked me, he said, uh, yeah, have, you see, have you heard from my wife? I said, and I just went ahead and told him. I said, well, she was admitted to the hospital. I said, she, she's in good spirit. You know how we can put things. She's in good spirit. But she was admitted to the hospital. And he was there, pray God, at the Bap Dallas Baptist, whatever it is, whichever one it was. And uh, I, I go to so many of them. And not only was he there, he was out at another rehab center that was out there. You drive so far, you felt like kissing the ground time you got there. Pray God. And at the end of it, pray God, uh, when he went on to be with the Lord, he was in another very nice facility. Uh, and so just we just followed him. And I've been in their home, been in their home and all. Amen. To, let's thank God for this wife. Come on, let's thank God for her. This entire family, these sons stepped up, amen. When I went there upon his demise, knew they had stepped up. And when you looked in the drawer, you now who had the beard? When I came, they had the beard. There you are, pray God. That's, that's Derek. Yeah, Derek. Derek had that drawer just full of stuff. Uh, it's probably stuff he needed to eat and stuff he didn't need to eat, but he got all kind of stuff in that drawer. And I wanted to bag me up some and take it with me when I got to. Praise God. But to see you all come through and uh, appreciating uh, Elder Hawkins, you've done a wonderful job. You've done a wonderful job as a friend, as officiant on today. But uh, for Mother Bolden, amen, to, uh, again, Evangelist Connie Gary, his sister, she made her way from Las Vegas. She didn't just show up after the fact. I saw her at the hospital. I think you may have been in a wheelchair or something, but I saw you at the hospital, had came in. Uh, to check on her brother, to see about it, and stayed for a while, amen, as they were working together with the schedule that was, was there. And Sister Martha, and certainly uh, Matthew, amen, Larry, even this brother-in-law, Thurman, pray God, Sister Lucky, we thank God for her on today. And that favorite uncle, Uncle Donald, Uncle Donald, thank God for him, amen? What a blessing there. And to, amen, to Robert, the children, Robert, Derek, mm -hmm. Elvin, I met Elvin there, and, and Amanda. Is that Clovisia? All right, I'm going to leave that alone. God bless your heart. Mm -hmm. Cordelia, I'm going to leave that alone too. God bless you. Julia, Libya, mm -hmm. Prager Shirley, Anthony. Christopher, all right, and 27 grandchildren. Come on here, somebody. A host of great grand. That's a blessing. All by itself. 
Praise God. And it came a point. I didn't just come in there and bearing down on him. I, I know I'd been here uh, about three years or so and had been at this church down through over 30 plus years. Had been coming to the Children's Memorial Church, work, working with the late Bishop S.E. Iglehart and also with his father, the late Bishop T.D. Iglehart, who ordained me as a as an elder in this church, in this organization, but uh, had worked with them over 30 plus years prior to coming here to San Antonio. And uh, when I got here, I knew that I hadn't seen that name on my stretch because by that time his health had declined, but I knew I needed to get busy in order to serve this congregation. And I want to let you know they, they've opened doors. They worked with me. And I want to thank God for Sister Emily. I want to thank God for Sister Sands. Amen. Friends. Amen. That stepped up and to help. Amen. To minister to this family. But it came a point. I didn't just come straight in on uh, Brother Robert. You say, Buck, I didn't come straight in on him about what, what we thought we need to do. Uh, because what we're concerned about is his soul. His soul, pray God. And so ministering to him uh, in love and all and being there. Sometimes you just need to be a light in a dark place. That's what these friends represent. That's what this clergy represents. When, amen. When it get, you don't need a light, sometimes it'll get dark. And it's good to be, as Jesus would say, you're the light. Amen. You're light and that he shines through. Amen. Salt. Amen. To bring flavor to a bland situation that, uh, like a city that sit on a hill that can't be hid. And so God opens the door. And, and after ministering, uh, just uh, ministry of presence for a while, and many times, just Cam Camilla, she'd get off work. She'd sit with her clients and all her patients. She'd sit with them throughout the night, put in all kind of hours, and get straight off work and then come straight to the hospital and sit with him and be with him is what it was. And you know, family, pray God, when he was, uh, went home, uh, he, he sat there in, right beside his bed for, I don't know, several days, seemed like several days. He said the, the, it just didn't feel comfortable laying down. And I think, Derek, you helped him to lay down at the last place where he was at. But I'd go there by the home, and, and he's just sitting there beside the bed, and just Camilla was trying to get him to lay down and all. But somebody said, God is faithful. Somebody said, God is faithful. And throughout it all, he rededicated his life to the Lord. Come on here, somebody. He rededicated his life to the Lord because that's what it's really all about. Now we can celebrate. Now, that wasn't something I heard. That was something I asked him. I said, would you, would you like to rededicate your life to the Lord after being with him on several visits and several visitations? I asked him, and he said, yes. And he did that. Come on, let's thank God, putting his faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on Calvary's cross. That's what really matters right there. Amen. Paul said, behold, I show you a mystery. I show you a mystery. He said, we should not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. Somebody say in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Pray God, for this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass, saying, amen, it's written, death is swallowed up in victory. Pray God, he says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. Pray God. And the strength of sin is the law. Somebody say, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ. I want to somehow give God praise right now that he put his faith and trust in God. Isn't it something that the God we serve, as was sung just a little bit ago, we can only imagine some of these things, but the God that we serve, amen, as you will see in Genesis 2 and 7, that he would take, amen, and form man out of the 
dust. He formed man out of something that nobody wants. He formed man out of something that nobody cares for, and that's dust, if you will. Pray God, you can walk through an airport, and a perfect stranger can walk up to you and tell you got dust on your toupee. Y'all ain't saying that. And you'll think, excuse me, I mean, on your suit. And you'll thank them, pray God, for wiping dust off your suit, pray God. Amen. A perfect stranger can walk up and say you got dust here, and you thank a perfect stranger who you never met before for wiping dust off. But God formed man out of the dust of the earth, pray God. Breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. A living soul. Pray God, he's the only form of life that has a soul. Come on, I'm talking about the God we serve. I'm talking about the great God that we serve. Pray God, his infinite wisdom, pray God. Amen. His omniscience is all knowing, is all powerful. Pray God, he's everywhere at the same time, but would form man out of the dust, something that nobody wants. Pray God, breathe in his nostrils the breath of life. Man becomes a living soul. He's the only form of life that has a soul. Amen. No, no, your, your little pet cat, your little pet dog, your little pet goldfish, it doesn't have a soul. But man, God put a soul on the inside. In that soul, pray God, is his mind. In the soul is a will that man has. He can either accept God or not accept God. He can shake his fist at God and say, I want nothing to do with you. But pray God, but, G, but God said it in his word. And pray God, listen, in Deuteronomy 30, he said, I set before you life and death. He said, blessing and cursing. Pray God. He said, but choose life. It's up to man with a soul that God put in him to choose life, if you will. I thank God that Brother Robert chose life. Come on in, somebody. I thank God he chose Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life that no man come to the Father but by me, if you will. This same God. I said this same God. The God of the universe. The one that watched over Brother Robert in that 18 wheeler while he's busting gears. The one that Pray God, they watched over him, pray God, when he gave you, amen, the Dallas special, when he gave you the New Orleans special, when he gave you the Memphis special, when you needed your car fixed, you said, I'm going to Dallas, I'm going to Memphis, I'm going to New Orleans, and it was all $20 for the best price, y'all ain't said that, but the same God that watched over him during that time, pray God, that watched over him and would, would create this man, pray God, form him as he did, pray God, and isn't it something, pray God, God, that he would form what he would call when Brother Robert put his faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He formed what he called a new creature, a new creation, pray God, where old things were passed away, where all things became new. That's what, that's what happened in Brother Robert's life. He became a new creature when he gave his life over to the Lord. Pray God, I want to let you know as a new creature, pray God, we may go down, but you need to understand who's, who's seen that box today. Amen. He's gone. That's not him in that box. Uh, that's not him in that house. He moved out of that house and because he's in Christ Jesus, this new creature is absent from the body and present with the Lord. This new creature, pray God, he may be going to the grave. He's going to sleep, pray God, but this new creature, God's going to raise him up again. I said God is going to raise him up again. He'll walk the streets of gold. The last part of him that shall be redeemed is this body right here. The last part to be redeemed is this body. I don't care, pray God, if we spread them over the Atlantic Ocean. I don't care if we spread them over the Pacific Ocean. God is going to raise them up again. God we shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. This corruptible shall put on incorruption. This mortal shall put on immortality. That's the hope of the believer. Come on and give God praise right down there. That's the hope of the believer, praise God. Somebody say hope of the believer. We have hope. Be sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. That rock is Jesus. The hope that is set before us, that's the rock that is Jesus. Uh, Brother Robert died in faith. Uh, he died in hope, uh, but he'll live again. Uh, change 
changed uh, in a moment, uh, in a twinkle of an eye. Somebody say, he's got the victory. Uh, God gave him the victory. Uh, in no more sorrow, uh, no more pain, uh, no more doctor's visits, uh, no more oxygen tanks, uh, no more shots, uh, no more pills. Uh, he's in the land of no more, uh, no more sun, uh, no more moon, uh, but the Lord himself uh, shall light up that place. Uh, the streets uh, are pure gold. Uh, there's a river there uh, with water uh, like crystals. Uh, there's a tree uh, with leaves uh, for the healing of the nations. Uh, someone say, God, God, uh, raising him up again. Give him praise and give him glory. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. Pray God, and the dead shall be raised, some say incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Give God praise all over the house. Give God praise. It can happen for you down through 42 generations. Jesus came down through 42 generations, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we're healed. Somebody say he suffered. I said he bled and he died. But whatever Jesus got, we get. I said he suffered. He bled and he died. But on the third day, I said God raised him from the grave with all power in heaven and earth, and he's alive. We're heirs and join heirs together with him. Give him praise all over this house. Praise God. Whatever Jesus got, Robert gets and the believer gets, we have eternal life. He's buck to you, he's robber to others, but God knew him as an overcomer. God knew him as more than a conqueror. God knew him as a, and knows him as a new creature. God knows him as a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, a holy nation. God is in control. God is in control. God bless you. Because on today we're going to do the committal here at the church. I'm going to ask some of the elders to come down with me. I want to thank and appreciate this family allowing us to serve you in this time and thanking God for again this wife being at his side and those children that were able to and his sister and the family that was able to be at his side and we're praying for you this favorite uncle and each and every one we're praying for this family on today For as much as it's pleased Almighty God to take out of this world our deceased, Brother Robert Lovelace, Lovelace, we commit his body to Mother Earth, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at whose second coming and in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body, according to the work and whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself, if you will, Amen. Pastor Hunt, if you'll come and lead us in what Jesus, the prayer he taught his disciples. Amen. Our Father. 
to repeat after Pastor. He's over 39. Repeat after me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. For thine is the kingdom against us, wait a minute, trespasses against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for now and forever. Amen. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, pray God, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. From henceforth, yea, say the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. God bless you. We want to thank God for your services. Just before we conclude our services, on behalf of the family, I'd like to say thank you very much to all the relatives and friends that are here to show you love and support. Thank you to the church home and all the ministerial staff. Thank you for the words of comfort given to the family and to the family on behalf of my husband and I, Bell and Bell Funeral Home, and all of our staff, we like to say thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of this homegoing celebration. May God keep and bless each and every one of you will be our prayer. God bless you. As we, as we transition out, the family and in the friends that are connected to the family, right across the hallway, amen, will, is food prepare, prepared for the family, amen, by the staff here at Praise Cathedral. As we stand, as we stand. If you want to know where I'm going, where I'm going, oh, soon. If anybody asks you where I'm going, can take the pain, the heartaches it brings, I find comfort in knowing I'll soon be gone, as God grants me grace to run this race, until I see my Savior.